الحمد لله رب العالمين والآكبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم To respected ulamas, elders and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please repeat after me. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. As-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habib Allah. Wa ala alika. Wa ashabika. Ya Nur Allah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. Okay, so this week we're going to go through the wajibat of Salah. In your book, it's uh, page number nine. Okay, there's filling in the blanks. <coughs> and last week, this is what we did last week, Faraid and Salah. And we went through the Faraid one by one. And you've all written in your book, so you should know what it is and what also makes up one rakat. We'll probably go through that again next week. And today, wajibat in Salah. So the wajibat, so can anyone remember what wajib means? Second to further, yeah. Uh, what, what, what one word definition would we give it? It means necessary, okay? So it's something that we have to do, but it's one step below farad, okay? And the wajibats are there to perfect the farad actions. So remember the seven faraid that we went through last week? The wajib actions are there to tell us how to do these farad actions, how to make them, how to make them right. Okay. Now, if anyone misses a wajib action in salah, the opposite of wajib is makru. So their salah becomes makru, and they must repeat the prayer because it's not totally valid. Okay, it's disliked by Allah. So missing a wajib action, any wajib action in namaz, will make you become sinful, and you should repeat your salah. So this is why we need to know the wajib in salah. But technically speaking, if all the faraid actions are done, then your salah is valid. But if you miss a wajib, you will be sinful. Okay? But if you realize you missed a wajib action whilst you are in salah, you can always perform sajjat al And that we will discuss in a couple of sessions. So let's go back one slide. So what we're going to do, if you look in your books, there's a fill in the blank section. So I'm going to ask each of you, or one of you, to read one out loud and fill in the blank as you go along. So who wants to read out number one? Surah yeah, so read the full thing and put and just say Surah Fatiha. So read it out. <laughs> Subhanallah. Okay, so everyone say Subhanallah. Okay, so I'll bring it up on the slides now. So to recite Surah Fatiha with another surah in the first two rakats of a farat namaz and all the rakats in wajib, sunnah and nafil is wajib. And after that to recite a minimum of three short ayahs or one long ayah. Okay? Most of the time we read a surah anyway. Now to read Surah Fatiha in the last two rakats of a farad salah is sunnah. Okay? And this wajib action perfects the farad action. So as we said, the wajib actions perfect the farad action. So the farad action, which farad action does it Perfect. Anyone know? Yeah. Not Qiyam. Qiyam means standing up. The one after that. Yeah. Qirat. Okay, what does Qirat mean? Recitation. Okay, so it's for us to recite the Quran and it's wajib is telling us what to recite. So it's perfecting that for action. Okay, I'll do the second one because no blank, easy one. So, second one is to perform all actions calmly and without any delay. So that means that we must move smoothly from one position to another position without rushing. Okay, do it slowly, calmly. And you must stay in that position for a minimum period of one tasbih. One tasbih just means, you know, the time it takes to say subhanallah once. Literally one second. So you've got to stay in that position for a second at least. Also, there must be no delay in moving to the next action. So once you finish tilawat, go straight into ruku without pausing unnecessarily. And we'll come back to this in a moment, but a delay would be the time period of three tasbih. Okay? So if you delay some, something, so for example, you finish your kirat, 
but you don't go into ruku and you're just quiet there for a period of the time it takes to say three subhanallahs so subhanallah 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 it's about three seconds that is against the wajib so we must not delay okay now the third one who wants to read that No, it's not called Qaeda Akira, but good, good, good try. Anyone know what it's called? No, that's close as well, but <laughs> something else. Anyone know? Anyone at Elders? Go on, you must know. I'm disappointed. Look one. It's called Qaeda Ula. Alright? I'm going to ask you this next week. To sit and read the first Tashahud in any Salah containing... More than two rakats, so to, to sit in, in between the first two and the second two, that is a wajib, and that's called qaida ula. Qaida means sitting, ula means first. Okay, easy, easy way to remember. Once you finish the attahiyat, you must stand up straight away. And if you begin to pray durud Ibrahim and get to the fourth word of the name Muhammad, وسلم, then that counts as a delay, okay, and is opposite the wajib. Because remember what we said that three words equals a delay. So once you get to the fourth word, that's a delay. So it's opposite to the wajib. So in this situation, you must do sajjat to saf or you repeat the salah. But it counts as a delay on the name Muhammad because that's the fourth word. All right? So uh, what you need to remember is qaida ula is wajib. And once you've finished at tahiyat you stand up straight away, continue with the third rakat and the fourth rakat. So what are we on now? Number four. I've written it wrong there, haven't I? Anyway, let's go. No, no, that's right. Number four, who wants to read it? Yes. Qaeda <laughs> Akira, that's right, yes. SubhanAllah. So, so remember, Qaeda Akira, that's one of the faraid of Salah, which we went through last week. Um, but remember, the faraid action is just to sit in that position for as long as it takes to read at tahiyat but the wajib is to read at tahiyat So we must still read at tahiyat there. Uh, once we go number five. Oh, so from this side here. Yeah. Anyone from that side, number five? No, that side. Go. No, read the... No, number five. You said number six. To perform salam. To indicate the end of salah. That's right. Now, let's just go to that side. So this is the action where you first turn your head to the right side and you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then you repeat that on your left side. Now, when you're performing salam, you've got to make an intention that you are saying salam to the angels on your shoulders. Kiram and Katibi, they write everything that we do down. And also to anyone praying with you on that side in Jamaat. So if all the people are praying on that side and all the people are praying on that side. Whichever side the Imam's on, you make an intention that you're praying there as well. Now the word as-salam is a minimum that you need for the wajib to be complete. So the word as-salam is wajib and the rest becomes a sunnah. Okay, now once you go to number six, that boy over there already said it. Yeah, read the full, read the full thing. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> To read Dua Kulud in the final rakat of Witr Salah. So the three Witr, this is in Isha. It'll be on your table, if you can't remember. Once you've completed Surah Fatiha and your Surah, then you say Allahu Akbar, you raise your hands to the ears, and then you recite Dua Kunut. Okay? Now Dua Kunut, if you don't know Dua Kunut, you can read other Duas, like Rabbina Atina Fid Dunya Hasanatu Wa Fil Akhirati Hasanatu Wa Kina Azab al But it's best to learn Dua Kunut. It's not, it's not that difficult. You look at it, it looks long, but... It's not that bad. So I've got it up there. I want someone to read it out. Subhanallah. Okay, very good recitation. 
Let's go to the translation. Okay? So some of us, we know what the dua is, but we don't really know what the translation is. And if we know the translation, it helps us concentrate when we're praying salah. Because okay? we can focus our minds a bit better. So translation. O oh Allah, we beg help from you alone. Ask forgiveness from you alone. And turn towards you. And praise you for all the good things. And are grateful to you. And are not, and are not ungrateful to you. And we part and break off with all those who are disobedient to you. O oh Allah, you alone do we worship. And pray exclusively to you. And bow before you alone. And we hasten eagerly towards you. And we fear your severe punishment. And hope for your mercy. As your severe punishment is surely to be dispensed out to the unbelievers. If we look at this translation, it's a beautiful translation. But how many of us actually know it? If we, if we try and learn it. I think I've written it in the book somewhere. If we try and learn it, then it'll help us concentrate a little bit better. We'll go to 7th Wajib now. So there's two fill in the blanks. Tricky one. One, one of the elders to do it this time. So they've got to be over 16. Go on, anyone from over 16? You're not 16. Yeah, th- read the full sentence. Subhanallah. Okay. So it's between ruku. Okay. Now to read six additional takbirs during Eid Salah. So Eid comes twice a year. So we do we pray Eid Namaz twice a year. No, no one can really remember what we do here. So the Imam says it just before we start the Eid Salah. So the first three additional takbirs we do is done after takbir tahrima and thana. So the Imam recites takbir tahrima, says Allah Akbar. Everyone else says Allah Akbar. We read thana. And what you do is Imam will say Allah Akbar. He raises his hands to his ears, but then he puts it by your side. Okay? And we repeat that second time. And the third time, we tie it in front of us like we would normally do. Like okay? we go through the practical aspect of salah. We're going to start doing that from next week. So uh, we'll go into that in more detail. So that's the first set of three. So we've done three in the first rakat. We need to do three more in the second rakat. So the next set of three, which you do in the second rakat, you do that before going into ruku. So the imam will do three extra takbirs, and in all three, you raise your hands to your ears, put it onto your sides, and then on the fourth one, we go into ruku. Okay? Uh, well, we'll move on to the next one. Who wants to read number eight? Come again, same people. Here you go. Excellent. Subhanallah. Okay, so the gap there is Maghrib. So, you know the recitation the Imam does, he recites Surah Fatiha and the Surah, but the rest of us stay quiet. You recite that loudly in Fajr, Maghrib, which is what you got to write in, Isha, Jumma, Eid, Tarawi, and Witr. Okay, after we do number nine, we'll explain why. So, once you do number nine, Excellent. So, so Zohar and Asr, the Jirat is read quietly. But again, if you're following the Imam, you stay quiet. Now, this was the practice. This was the practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is what he used to do. Initially, okay, in the early days of Islam, the Imam used to read the Jirat loudly in all salah. So even Zohar, Asr, read Surah Fatiha, everything loudly. But when the non-Muslims, when the non-believers heard this. They used to abuse them whilst they were praying namaz. Okay? And when you're praying namaz, you can't really do anything. You can't defend yourself. So it was revealed to Rasulullah to pray quietly in Zohar and Asr. That way, the non-believers didn't realize that you know, they're praying, they're a bit vulnerable. The Muslims were okay to pray loudly in Fajr, Maghrib and Isha because at this time, the kuffar, they were either sleeping or they were eating. So they were busy at this period. Now this practice was carried, on, carried out in Medina too. Even though in Medina the Muslims had safety, they were safe there. But Salah which began in Medina, such as Eid prayers and Juma, so Juma is done at the same time as Zohar, but Juma you pray loudly, whereas in Zohar you pray quietly, because Juma started in Medina when the Muslims were safe to pray loudly. So we move on to the next one, number 10. 
you should remain silent during the Torah of the Imam recite citation is sophisticated for him. Sufficient for him. That's excellent. Okay, so the Muqtadi should remain quiet or silent. Okay, they don't, we don't rec recite with the Imam's recitation because there's a hadith from Ibn Majah and I think we mentioned some hadith last, last week as well that states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Man kana lahu imamun fa inna kira'atal imami lahu kira'atun. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, whoever has an imam, the recitation of the imam is his recitation. Okay, so the imam's recitation would cover the recitation for all the muqtadis as well. We've got two left. Uh, number 11. <coughs> Subhanallah. Okay, so for those who didn't hear, when performing sajda, the forehead and the hard part of the nose, called a nasal bone, I explained that last week, must be in firm contact with the ground. Okay? Now, the farad action is to prostrate, just do sajda. But again, here the wajib is perfecting the farad action, and making sure we prostrate properly. So there's a picture of a nose there. You see, if I should use a pointer, some people will just touch that tip part, yeah? Onto the ground. But you can't, t it's not just the tip part you need to touch. You need to touch that whole bit there. You know the hard part. The whole bit needs to touch the ground. Okay? That's the perfect way for doing sajda. There are other sunnah aspects as well. But we'll come to that next week when we um, go through the step by step. And last one now. So a fairly so short session this week. Number 12. Who wants to read it? Okay, you. Excellent. So, yeah, that's right. So to say the words, to perform Takbir Tahrimah, we must use the words Allahu Akbar. We can't say anything else, but we all, we all know this sort of stuff, but it's a wajib. So if you make a mistake, okay, you can't just let it go. You'll have to do Sajjatul Saf. Okay, we'll come to that later on. If you don't, then you have to repeat your Salah. So you got to remember these things. This week and last week is very important. Last week, if you miss out any of them, your Salah won't count. This week, if you miss out any of these, your salah won't count and it must be repeated unless you do sajda to sah, which we'll come on to in about two or three weeks. Okay, but that's pretty much everything sorted for today. Next week, we're going to go through the step-by-step -step guide to salah. And we're going to change the, uh, the timing. It's going to become after Maghrib because Isha is going to go a bit later. So just check what time Maghrib is on the timetable. Well, I think we're looking about 5.50ish. That, that sort of ballpark figure. Um, now, we're not actually going to go through any sunnah or nawafil as a separate section. There's, two, there's a lot to cover. But when we go through the step-by-step -step guide, things that are mentioned there that are not farad or not wajib, <coughs> then they will be amongst the sunnah and the nawafil. I will clear that up once we go through that. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاكُ الْمُبِينَ السَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ